All right, we're going to do 3.2 linear functions. And um, first, just understanding what a linear function looks like. So hopefully this is a bit of review. But remember, a linear function has to be in the form of y equals, uh, we usually call it mx plus b if you're familiar with slope-intercept form. But if you're not, it's just y equals a value of x raised to the first power. Now, you won't see a power of 1. We don't really show that. We really just write that as y equals x. And you could have numbers in front of it, y equals 4x. Uh, you could have uh, parentheses around it, y equals 4 times x plus 5. That can be simplified. All of these are things that are linear equations. Okay? So when we look at, look at an equation, we're trying to figure out if it's linear or not, then we're looking for a variable raised to the first power things that are not linear, okay? So it's, sometimes it's good to just see what is not a linear equation. Well, if it has that power, that x to the first power, but inside a radical, that is not linear. That is actually called a, a uh, square root function. Oops. Okay? Um, or uh, if you have your function with x on the denominator, that's a rational function. It's okay to have x in the numerator. So, for instance, if I had, say, like y equals x over 2, that's the same thing as y equals 1 half x. Okay, so that would mean that's okay. But if x is in the denominator, that's not okay. If it's in the numerator, it's okay. Okay, um, if you have, like, y equals 3 or any number to a power of x, that is not okay. Um, so those are some instances where you you, you would uh, not it would not be linear or y equals x to a different power, maybe like x squared or x cubed. Those are not linear. Okay. So all of these are linear. All of these on the bottom are not. Okay. In terms of a table uh, format, well, a table. Just so we um, remember x and y, uh, if, you're, if you're looking at a table, x is generally on your left, y is on the right. If you're looking at it in a sideways format, x is on top, y is on bottom. Okay, but really what you're looking for is you're looking for a constant change. So as x increases by a constant amount every time, so notice here it's going up by 1 at each time. you're looking for y to go up by the same amount. So maybe it goes up by 3. That would be linear. Or, let me kind of draw a line here. Uh, maybe we have like 2, 4, 6, 8. So on top, for x, x is increasing by 2 every time. I'm just going to do that, saying it's going up by 2. And then maybe x is starting at 7, or negative 7 even, and maybe it's going down 2 every time. Now, usually uh, when you get into algebra, we don't start saying, well, we're subtracting 2. We're actually adding a negative 2. We're adding a negative 2 each time here, so which really just means you're going down 2 each time. Or some of you would just say, well, that just means I'm subtracting 2, and you wouldn't be wrong. That's right. We just usually start talking about addition um, uh, rather than subtraction. So we write addition in terms of subtraction, or subtraction in terms of addition. Okay? So just uh, to give an example of when it is not, a table is not linear. And let me just uh, give an x, y this way. Okay? So let's say I'm going up by a constant for x. All right. So there we go. So we're increasing by 1 every time. All right. So x is good to go. We're like, all right, that, that works well. And then down here, let's just say, well, let's start at like 4. 
and let's call that 8, maybe that's 16, 32, 64. So there is actually a pattern. The pattern is I'm multiplying by 2. So there is a pattern. However, it's not as we're not adding. We are multiplying here. So in order for it to be linear, you have to be adding a constant amount to both parts or subtracting. Okay. If you're multiplying or have any other pattern, that's not linear. All right. And then graphically, well, graph's a lot easier. Whoa, I can't really see that color all that well, so let me get rid of that. Barely can see where to erase. Um, let's go back here. All right, let's say I have an xy axis. For those of you who don't remember, there's x. Here's y. All right, now let's put a line on that, okay? So here's my line, or or my graph, I guess. That happens to be a quadratic. It is not linear. A linear has to be a straight line. So it could be a line that looks like that. It could be um, a horizontal or a vertical line, but it has to be a straight line. And just so we know, um, this graph right here, let me draw another xy axis here. This graph is not linear. I know it has straight lines, but it has a, a turning point called a vertex. This is not linear. So these are pictures of lines or graphs that are not linear, whereas the top one is linear. Okay. So using that information makes it a le little easier to deal with our data. So I'm going to talk about now discrete and continuous graphs. So this one, here's my two xy's, and I referenced this in my last lesson. Um, all right, we have an xy axis there. Um, I know, so like the math purists out there would be really upset that I didn't put arrows on my first graphs. So there we go. All right, so um, let's go ahead and put some uh, line on here. Continuous data. Continuous data would be any time you have data on a line, okay? Or I'm sorry, any time two points or multiple points are connected by a line. Any time points are connected. In this case, I made it linear, but it could, doesn't have to be linear. This is continuous data, okay? You could have, by the way, you could have uh, this change. It doesn't have to be linear. Okay, I just kept it as linear originally because um, that's what we're talking about. So I'm going to keep it as linear, okay? Um, discontinuous, or not discontinuous, excuse me, discrete data. Discrete data means you just have points. So if you look at a graph and you just see points, okay? Let me not put so many random points here, huh? Okay. Let's say you just see points. That data is discrete. Okay? It means that my data is only exists for those specific points on the x axis and on the y axis. Okay? Whereas in this, my data exists in between every point on the x axis and every point on the y axis where that graph is. So we're going to see that in some examples here. Okay? So, this continuous or discrete, what is the domain? The height of a building H is a function of the number of stories in the building N. City ordinances state that a building cannot be taller than 60 feet. Each story increases the building's height by 15 feet. Write a function to represent the height of the building as a function of the number of stories. All right, a little wordy, but here we go. So in other words, we're going to write a function. You know what? I'm just going to write it in an equation format because I haven't talked about functions right now. So I'm going to write it in an equation. I'm going to write an equation. Okay. Whoops. Let's go back to that. All right. So y equals, since, um, since each story increases the building height by 15 feet, okay, I am going to say 15 times the number of stories in is equal to y, or in this case, I guess it's not equal to y. We're going to call it equal to h. Okay. Now, once again, if it's a math purist out there, you're upset because I'm not in function notation when it says write a function. So I am going to say that we're writing it in an equation format. For those of you who really want to know function format, it, this would be h of n 
equals 15n. But I think that confuses the situation more than it helps right now because I'm not really focused on functions. I'm focused on writing the equation. So here's my equation. h equals 15n. Now graph the function. Well, that just means if n is 0, so I could start making a table. I could say, well, okay, well, my input is n. My output is h. h, the height, depends upon my number of stories. So I could have zero stories, but that would just give me a height of zero. That would be kind of a boring building. So if I say that's zero, zero, um, and I guess I should actually change up. I should not call this y. I should call it h, and I should not call this x. I should call it n. Okay. So this is the height of the building. I, for some reason, keep switching screens. Height and number of stories. We'll label that N. And you know, I should really do a much better job here, so I would be really grumpy if my uh, students did that. So I'm going to label that as height here. And it would actually be height in feet. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to put in a 1. If I have one story, that's going to be 1 times 15, which is going to give me an output of 15. And I'm just going to say I'm going up by 15. If I put a 2, I'm going to have 2 times 15, which is 2 times 15 is 30. So this is going to be 30. Notice I have to go up by a constant amount. So I'm going up by 1 on x. If I put a 3, I'm going to have 45. If I put 4, I'm going to have 60. Oh, I remember a 60. Hold on. City ordinances say it can't be any higher than 60 feet. That means I have to stop there. So after four stories, my building can't be any four taller than four stories going to be 60 feet tall. So what's the domain, and is it discrete or continuous? Well, let's think. First, can can my high, or can my number of stories exist between one and two? In other words, can there be a one and a half story on a building, or a two and a half stories, or three? Would it make sense to draw a line to connect these? Because if I do, if I draw a line in there, really that's saying, well, you could have a half a story. You could have a quarter or an eighth of a story. Heck, you could have one, one sixteenth of a story. That's not accurate. It's either a full story or it's not. So really, it doesn't make sense to connect these points, which means this data right here is discrete. The domain of the function then means x equals, now remember what we did with the domain, if it's just points, we just list our x values. And there we've got it. All right, let's look at another example. All right, I need to do some erasing since I accidentally wrote on it. Okay, so this one says a 30-gallon hot tub is draining at a rate of 2 gallons per minute. The number of gallons remaining is a function of the number of minutes, write a function to represent the number of gallons remaining of the hot tub after m minutes. Okay, so um, first the function. Uh, we have 30 gallons, we're draining 2 gallons per minute. Okay, so if I say, well, for every 2 minutes, or for, for every minute, I'm draining 2 gallons. That'd be 2m. That's a rate. And I am taking that 2m, and it is going to eventually give me or drain a 30-gallon hot tub. Okay, so, so I start with 30 gallons, and I'm subtracting out 2 gallons per minute. And that's going to tell me how many gallons I have left over. So you know what? I should really get rid of this 2m up here. All right. So really... What I, let me go ahead and uh, label some stuff here. Uh, the number of gallons is going to depend on the number of minutes. So this is our minutes, or time, I guess, time measured in minutes. This is 
number of gallons or amount of water, actually, the way we should be saying it, the amount of water measured in gallons. Okay. And so we start at 30. So I'm way up here at zero minutes. And another way to draw a table, I didn't do this in my last one, is to do an H table where I have my minutes, my independent, my dependent, and then my rule. This is my rule. 30 minus 2M. It's a nice, my goodness, it's a nice way to show you as you're doing it. So um, 30 minus 2M. So at zero minutes, let's say, so that'd be 30 minus two times zero or 30 minus zero, which is 30. At one minute, it'd be 30 minus two times one. Notice the M just keeps changing, that's 28. And at two minutes, that'd be 30 times two times two. Notice I just input or substitute in the parentheses there. That's 30 minus four, 26, okay? And I can keep going like that until, you know, maybe I, Notice I'm going down by two every time here. Let's try just to make sure things aren't, you know, hopefully you've recognized it's linear, okay? So that means this is going to be a constant rate of change. I'm just going to keep decreasing by two. So if I look well at one minute, I've went down two. And at 28, at two minutes, I'd be down at 26. 3, 24. keep going my down two. For those of you that have done this before, you're like, hey, that's slope. And hey, you're right, it is slope. All right, I keep going down two. And notice, after 15 minutes, I now have an order pair 15, zero. That means I, after 15 minutes, I have zero gallon. So, first, what's the domain and is it discrete? Well, for, well, that means it like a half a minute. Does it make sense to have a line connecting these points? Like, is is my water continuously draining? So does it make sense at a half a minute, if I'm draining at two, um, two gallons per minute, it makes sense that at half a minute I'd be at 29 gallons, and at one and a half minutes I'd be at 27? Or does it mean that like at one minute you're at 28 and then it waits until you get to the second minute and all of a sudden you're at 26. And then it just pauses and then once you hit 24, oh, you lose two gallons. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So yes, you have to connect these points. So this data is continuous because the water is continuously draining. The domain then means we are actually starting at zero on X and going to 15 on X. So X, is in between 0 and 15, and that is our domain. We didn't ask for the range, but if you wanted to do the range on this just because you love math and you think it's so fun, well, the range starts at 0 and it goes to 30. And technically, it started at 30 and went to 0, but it's in between 0 and 30. So it exists in between those. That's what you got. All right, that's it. Linear functions. Good lucky.